absolutely no, no interest. Totally I'm totally waving weird. in Braille. <laughs> uh, and is waving in Braille. And, and Jonathan, um, new, new, new yeah, to uh, yeah. the panel. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome to Astro Hi, Radio. Pete. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, we're going to be doing a little quiz with Andy shortly. We'll we'll do the quiz after the next track, but we'll uh, we'll have a little chat first. Um, let people kind of get settled into the seats because you know with Andy with his quizzes, you can guarantee none of us are going to know the answers. So um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Oh, dear. One of the things in the news this week uh, was it was yesterday was the last day to sign up for going to the moon uh, with this uh, Japanese uh, billionaire, must be a billionaire, uh, to take people to the moon. I think it was eight people he's going to take to the moon. So what are your thoughts on that? We'll go Dave first. What are your thoughts on that, going to the moon um, on an untested mission? Well, it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? I'll give that a go, not First of all, if it's free, I'm there, I'm in the front of the queue, but I've got a bad back and I don't think I could actually sit in that seat for too long. I'd need to get up and have a little walk around or a float around once yeah. I'm up there. But uh, no, I think I like it a bit more testing. Let's get it, make sure it works. Would you have a vaccination if it hadn't been tested? Um, no. No, you wouldn't. Well, we did, sort of. But no, there you go. That, 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 they were tested, mate. They were yeah. tested. Oh, well, well, anyway, well, it won't we'll, exactly be untested, yeah. though, because uh, Elon Musk says that they are going to do an unmanned mission of Starship around the moon first. So it'll, it'll have at least one test. So. I should point out, Andy, it's unpersoned. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> unpersoned. Un unpersoned. Oh, right, right. Unpersoned, sorry. But yes. then again, I mean, then again, when you look at it, what did the Apollo 8 do? Not only did they launch a top. A, uh, a rocket that wasn't tested with humans in uh, Saturn V, but they went to the moon as well. So it has been done before, this yeah, uh, untested true. mission to the moon. Uh, that would, bit of politics, though, weren't there back in the day? Yeah, you had was, to do it. We were, they were getting behind on yeah. the schedule. The Russians were getting ahead. And they said, OK, well, let's just go. Let's go. Just keep yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, John, uh, I think it might be, uh, much as I would like to spend a few days away from the Earth for tax reasons, um, it might be nice to um, to actually go. I'd love to do it. Yeah, just as a matter of interest, are you aware of the first organic life forms that actually not landed on the moon but went to the moon? Do you know what they were? No. I remember it was, reading it, was it somewhere. A sneeze. It was a sneeze on Surveyor Seven, I believe. Mm. Oh, no, that's the, that's not what I actually meant. An organic <laughs> life form. Life form. It was actually Russian tortoises. Ah. The Russians sent two tortoises uh, to orbit the moon and they came back safely. So they probably slept all the way. But yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah that was, I only found that out the other day. It was uh, yeah. the Russians. They sent two, two Russian tortoises. And during the mission, for some unknown reason, the Russians actually played a recording of a conversation with a cosmonaut. And... Um, because the the Americans originally thought that they had lost the the race to go to the moon, so uh, yeah. But apparently, it turns out all they did is they sent two uh, two tortoises, and obviously one of them could talk Rus Russian. <laughs> <laughs> or tortai, he could speak yeah, tortai. Tortai is tortai. Sorry, sorry. Did, I digress. I digress. Yeah. Did they send them in a rocket, or was it just? You know, in a big catapult or something? <laughs> no, no, it was in a rocket. I can't remember the oh, name right, of the right. rocket. They were holding. They were holding up the flat Earth, weren't they? Uh, Jonathan, yeah. um, <laughs> what are your thought? What are your thoughts on this? Go. Would you? Would you do it? Would you go to the moon on an untested mission? Who are you oh, asking? But um, oh. have we been to the moon already? Haven't? We? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a wrong thing to say. Isn't it? Um, yeah. No, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe if it's all you know. If it, if yeah. that, then maybe I would, but, yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's, it's a chance if you've got the opportunity. I think most of us, I think probably most of us probably would jump at the opportunity, wouldn't we? To be honest, uh, yeah. if we if we if we had that opportunity, but uh, I don't think it's going to. It was not going to come my way at six, nearly sixty-five years old. They're probably thinking, yeah, 52, so, yeah. you know. But uh, <laughs> so, Rachel, would you go? I'd like to think instinctively. I'd say yes, but I'm a real baby for risk assessments i mean if you see me at alton towers before getting on a roller coaster it's diabolical i mean they're like oh it's all right it only goes upside down i'm like that doesn't concern me it's the hydraulics failing and me falling out <laughs> so i'd like to say yes but i think since i have panic attacks pretty much sitting in a cinema i probably wouldn't be good being strapped in anything 
if anybody found me as a specimen of life, I don't think I'm the best role model to be found on the moon. <laughs> I, I've got to agree with Rachel. If, if I see, you know, you know these fairgrounds, especially if, when you go you know, on holiday in Europe, they have these giant elastic bands where they catapult you up. I'm thinking, I, I go back to college when I'm doing Young's Modules of Elasticity, Hooke's Law. I think, well, how many times have they stretched that elastic band and fired it and drawn it back got to give you know, at some point there's a point yeah. to give isn't it i remember that do you remember the curve You're like whoop, and they go, ping. that's yeah. it well, I've I've been been several of those have been right <laughs> <laughs> have you been on with them kath I've been on several of those. I've done a bungee jump Keep, over the sea. What? Okay, no, so you're really. a trade, you, so you're the nearest in this panel who's probably been to be an astronaut. I would go what without the hesitation. Like? I've signed up. I'd like you to know I've signed up. Crazy dude. I've had, my, I've had the email come through. Um, I haven't gone. Through, I haven't actually yeah. opened it yet, but I, I signed up. Um, um, yeah, I signed up the other week, and the email has come through tonight. What does it say? I haven't no. gone to the back, but it's my invitation. <laughs> please, please leave yeah, your deposit on your account I've got the invitation for initial screening, which, yeah. well, yeah, we'll fill it out. But I know that I will probably fail it because I'm on a, a certain medication. So they probably won't accept me. But believe you me, I would I would go for it. Does I'm gin come under? Is, is gin actually a medication, though, <laughs> Kath? <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't start. No, don't no, start. I, I, I tend to think of whiskey as medicinal because it thins me blood yeah. and therefore well, gin, less gin chance of having medicinal. a heart attack. It is medicinal, well, but there you um, go, then. They, they might they might fail me on the medical for being <clears throat> slightly overweight and <clears throat> on a medication of some sort other than gin. But hey ho, I'm going to fill it out. And but isn't um wasn't gin known as home? mother's ruin? Yeah. yeah, because of its it depressive, it's me meant to be depressive, isn't it? Do, do you know it, it is supposed to be? But I'm always really happy when I drink gin. Well, yeah. I, I was going to say, it doesn't work. In, well, it doesn't work in your case, does it? <laughs> I, I'm not going to go into the reasons why I believe no. it's called Mother's Room. No, me neither. Yeah. But my mother no. told me it's a thing. It's a thing of the forties and the nineteen fifties. But we'll just come got, back to just, that. Just got a message it. in from Stefan in uh, in Moscow, and he said. I actually uh, emailed um, uh, the Kremlin. He says, I emailed President Putin and That's asked him if he'd sponsor me. He said, funnily enough, he said, I've had no reply. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan needs, needs to ride a horse without his shirt yeah. on. Yeah. And we'll have to do some Stephen, crowd keep, keep trying, That's mate. Keep it. trying. Crowdfunding. Is my crowdfunding. Yeah, he's very much like an old five He's the one who's coming over to share your glamping pod. That's right. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. I used to like old spice back in the day. Yeah, yeah. just the and shirtless then... on a horse thing. I prefer. <laughs> I suppose I prefer baby spice. <laughs> that's a different thing, that base. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, which one was old spice? <laughs> <laughs> I think all she, of them now. As, as you yeah, can they're, hear, all, they're all mothers now, aren't they? So they're all pretty old spice. As yeah. you can hear, listener, I've lost control of the room now. Um, <laughs> okay, let's get back into that spacey <laughs> thing. Who, who else wants to go into space? Um, <laughs> yeah, so Kath said she'd go. Roger, uh, Roger. Jonathan reckons he can't he'd go. Uh, Roger, are you going? Oh, I'll give it a go. Why not? Yay! <laughs> the happy astronaut. You'll have to um, buy some new wellies. <laughs> <laughs> and, but you well, get issue with wellies, don't you? You know, only, only uh, we. I know suppose. you get issue with brown trousers. <laughs> oh. Standard issue, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now SpaceX's color, their the spacesuits actually is brown. Is it? Well, it's. No, no, oh, it I doesn't like. suit my complexion. That doesn't. <laughs> I mean, I when I interviewed when I interviewed Dallas Campbell on here the other week, he said he didn't like those new spacesuits that they're wearing. He says he said prefers to an astronaut to look like an astronaut, not somebody who's riding a high tech motorbike. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's got a point. He's got a yeah. point. <laughs> they struck me like they were a five year old's pajamas astronaut, yeah. uh, as, as, <laughs> astronaut suit. But yeah, there you go, Dave. Derek, uh, Derek Abbott has uh, just emailed me. He'd like to go so he can check on his plot on the moon. Uh, oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Plot. I just yeah, want to make sure plot, it's okay. Yeah. yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to another track and then we're going to come back with Andy's quiz. Have you all got your pens and paper ready? Andy, yeah, is you'll this... Need, is, you'll is, need is pens it, and paper. I need to go and get my charger for my laptop. It's Andy, laptop. is this a visual quiz or is, is it going to work on the radio? No, it works yeah. totally on the radio. That Brilliant. works totally so, on the radio. Yeah. So we're going to go over to a track now, and this is Guiding Star by Cast. <clears throat> and no, we're it's, off the it's, air, it's, yes. Uh, there's nothing visual about it, because okay. it is the radio after all. <clears throat> so, um, 
but you do need pen and paper. And you've got 10 questions and a total of 50 points available. So let's see oh. who gets closer to 50. OK, and it's all just all for fun. five. And it's all just it's all just for fun. It's all yeah. for charity, mate. Charity, mate. Not <laughs> off. Not off. Here's <laughs> <laughs> a recipe today, Jim. Oh, it I might start something. off as fun. <laughs> well, that's it. You know what? You know, it always falls into chaos, What's doesn't Pete it? Doing? What's point? Pete doing? Pete's, Pete's... He's bringing in jets on an aircraft carrier, I think. I oh, don't know. Yeah. He, he could be. <laughs> in, in case of emergency, please go yeah. that way, that way, or that yeah. way. Or... Yes. The, the, oh, behind you. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget, let's look up. <laughs> let's look up, everyone. <laughs> hey, hey, we love the video that you did for uh, All About the Cake. All About yeah. the Cake. <laughs> Uh, right, whilst we're all here, just before we go back on there, Mother's Ruin, Jim, yeah. uh, going back to the day uh, in, in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, when a, a lady found herself pregnant, one of the things was to was basically drink lots of gin, get in a hot bath, yeah. which would then promote a miscarriage. <clears throat> Is that right? right? That's in Liverpool. That's why it's known as Mother's Ruin. I don't know about uh, generally. That, that's uh, My mother always back. told me that. Yeah. I always I thought it was because it has to be bath of gin. gin. It's very de also very depressive as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've well, never been depressed well, after. Not, well, not well. That's to say, it's all a thing, isn't it? It's all in the end. Yeah. You know. But my best friend cannot drink it. She mm. she was out with me the one night. She said, "I'll drink whatever you're drinking." So I was drinking gin. Mm -hmm. Bought her gin. And she had and it. She got really miserable. And I mean, and she's she's like me, really bubbly. Yeah. Never yeah. doubt. And she said, "I don't know what's the matter with me." And and I suddenly said, "Very I strange." I said, "Do you normally drink gin?" And she said. No, and I went. So literally, I got I got her a soft drink, and then the next drink she had was a vodka, and she was fine within an hour. Fine, yeah, yeah. She couldn't but walk, it, but she was fine. <laughs> but it, it, it's the same oh, with no, whiskey. We, we tough stuff from Wolverhampton. Of course, we can walk. That's on it. it. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but after a couple of hours, you just float anyhow. I didn't mean to impugn the good people of yeah. uh, Wolverhampton. <laughs> but you know, it's same with whiskey, isn't it? Some people are okay with whiskey. Other people become, oh. you know, nasty. You know, aggressive and. Nasty it doesn't heads. make me aggressive, but it just doesn't. Whiskey just doesn't. Not, not for you, eh? It, no. no, a lot of the dark spirits don't agree with me. They just seem to yeah. agree. And they'll give me a headache. I don't mean like the morning after, but they'll actually give me a headache when I'm drinking them. Some yeah. Okay. If they were really good quality, when I went to Scotland and we did a distillery tour, I had we had some samples and I was like, oh, no, I can't drink whiskey. It makes me bad. And they said, this won't make you bad. <laughs> and to be fair, that didn't. But mm. general mm. off-the-shelf whiskey, mm -mm. Nah, got to be good, pure stuff, hasn't it? Yeah, because yes. wasn't there the, the what they go. called the gin laws or something? Yes, Whereas that's before right. they used to tax beer so highly that people were drinking mm. gin. Gin, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, but you used to you used to be able to send the kids to the the offline, you know, not the offline, yeah. but the to the bar and you'd fill a bottle up. You, you'd be yeah. bringing the bottle in for you know for the parents. But yeah, basically, you know, the, the yeah, country come to a standstill. Yeah. <clears throat> You used to be able to go to the corner shop and buy single cigarettes as well. I remember those days. Hey, we used to get them off the ice cream Beer man around here. Really? <laughs> something's, something's loose. It was it Lucy's? The, and yeah. I, I always thought it was Lucy as in L-U-C-Y or L-U-C-I-E-S. Ah. And I never realised why they were called Lucy's until about, about five years ago. Off the, off the <laughs> ice cream man? Did, did you oh, yeah, used to yeah, go to yeah. him and say, can I have a player's 99, please? <laughs> <laughs> I can stay of the way. Cast, this is Peter on Astro Radio. We used to call them joints. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we do call them. And uh, we'll come to you across the internet, across FM and AM. Well, when the ice cream man used to come down and ring the bell, the my mum used to say, yeah, uh, I just want to say hi to Tien in Japan, who's tuned in and ready for the quiz. And uh, you ready, I can see them all in the chat ready for the quiz, but I haven't released the mute button yet, so I can't hear them. But I can see their faces and they're looking anxious. <laughs> so we're going to go over to Andy now for Andy's, Andy's special quiz. Um, he's going to think I'm Googling, but I'm not because I've got no space on the desk to actually write anything. So I'm having to type it into Word on the main screen. But it, it, I'm not Googling, honestly, because I'm going to get them all wrong anyway. And, so, and these anoraks. Is it, yeah. Andy's, uh, so are we ready for your quiz, Andy? I'm, I'm ready if everybody else is. We're ready. No, um, hold okay. on. Hold no on. we're not wait, ready. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute. John in Milwaukee said he's just he's ready. OK. OK. <laughs> right. OK. Let's um, go, well, John in Milwaukee. Um, welcome, listeners, to the quiz. Uh, it's it's a bit of fun. That's all. Don't take it too seriously. Do um, message us with your your scores if you want to. 
and I just hope you, you enjoy it. And it's 10 questions, maximum of 50 points on offer. Um, so without more ado, let's get started. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. Question one. You're, uh, by the way, those of you on Zoom, I'm, I'm going to be reading off the other monitor. It doesn't mean I'm cross-eyed or anything. I'm just looking in the other direction, okay? <laughs> so um, question one. We often hear about the space race created uh, many spin-off technologies, but which two of the following technologies did not emerge from the exploration of space? And you get one point for both correct answers. So there are five, uh, one, two, three, four, five answers. And two of them are technologies that didn't emerge from the space program. Are you ready for the five? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. First one, scratch resistant lenses for glasses. Second one, the audio cassette tape. Number three, memory foam. Number four, Teflon. And the last one, self-driving tractors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to be embarrassing you now. Are we supposed to get the two that weren't? Or... Yes, the two that weren't. Yes. Can you, can so you which, it, which, which it again, of, then? <laughs> all right. Which two of these didn't come out of the space program yeah. uh, that were developed entirely independently of any space program? Scratch-resistant lenses for glasses, the audio cassette tape, memory foam, Teflon, or self-driving tractors? Okay, I've got my answers. They're probably wrong, but I've got them. <laughs> tell you, that Google's slow tonight on the Al Wi-Fi. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. Put, put the kettle on, Dave. You're running out of steam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Never. Just tell me when you're all ready for the next yeah, one. Yeah, we're ready. Everybody ready? ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Listeners, you ready? Good. Yep. The right. listeners are ready. They've got okay. to be ready, because they ready. can't answer me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Question two is a who am I? So who am I? No, I'm not me, obviously. I'm going to tell you. Andy. Uh, uh, oh, thank you. One point, Dave. Um, <laughs> thank you. Right. Thank you. This is for five points. <gasps> who am I? I'm an American astronomer born in 1927. I was a fellow of the Carnegie Institute and did research work at both the Mount Wilson and Palomar observatories. My primary area of research was the evolution of galaxies. In 1966, I published an Atlas of Galaxies, which is still in use today. I was known for my controversial views about quasars and the Big Bang. I won several major awards for my work and published articles right up until my death in 2013. Would you like me to read that again? Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Who am I? I'm an American astronomer born in 1927. I was a fellow of the Carnegie Institute and did research work at both the Mount Wilson and Palomar observatories. My primary area of research was the evolution of galaxies. In 1966, I published an Atlas of Galaxies, which is still in use today. I was known for my controversial views about quasars and the Big Bang. I won several major awards for my work and published articles right up until my death in 2013. Hmm. Mm. That's a difficult one. Mm. Uh, as always, you'll know it immediately you hear it. It's just it's one of those oh, adult moments. Yeah. I have a lot of them. This okay, one. ready? Yeah. Just okay. for fun. It's just for fun. Just for fun. Mm. Uh, question three for one point. What comes next in this sequence? My mass, Enceladus, Tethys, what's next? What comes next in this sequence? Mimas or Mimas, I'm not quite sure how it's meant to be pronounced. I always say Mimas. Enceladus, Tethys, what's next? Hmm. Okay. You know why I'm scratching my head, Andy? Yeah, got splinters. <laughs> not enough gin in this house for your quiz. Andy. Getting, getting splinters there, it does. <laughs> Shall we move on? Yeah. OK, we can go over them again afterwards, obviously. OK, question four. Um, this is a, a, a true or false about famous personalities relating to astronomy or space science. So are the following true or false? You get one point for each correct answer. And there are one, two, three, six of them. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Oh, OK. Oh, right, that is all right. Good. right. Good, I mean, uh, good. So the first one, is this true or false? A young Albert Einstein contemplated insurance as a career. 
True or false? He was good with sums. He was. Or, ma or math has been. Yeah. You should say. Now, number two. Sir Patrick Moore's <laughs> first job after the Second World War was as an encyclopedia salesman. Number three. Sir Isaac Newton made the first theoretical calculation of the speed of sound. Number four, Carl Sagan's father was born in Finland. <laughs> Number five, in real life, Schrodinger's cat was a tabby cat named Hans. And then lastly, number six, Brian Cox is an active member of the Roundheads and Cavaliers Historical Reenactment Society. Whichever way it's sad, but there we go. <laughs> Would you like me to go back over those? Uh, yeah, wait, well, it's up to, it's up to the... Uh, oh, for, for the, the audience, Let, for, for the, the audience, audience. Yeah, for out, the audience. out there. Let's, let's, yes. let's help our listeners. Right, I'll go over them quickly then. Uh, number one, a young Albert Einstein contemplated insurance as a career. Sir Patrick Moore's first job after the Second World War was as an encyclopedia salesman. Sir Isaac Newton made the first theoretical calculation of the speed of sound. Carl Sagan's father was born in Finland. Schrodinger's cat in real life was a tabby cat named Hans. And lastly, Brian Cox is an active member of the Roundheads and Cavaliers Historical Reenactment Society. If Brian Cox is listening, is he allowed to answer that question? <laughs> only only <No>. that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready to move on? Yeah. Yes. Question five. This one could be a bit of a toughie. So this one will sort the, uh, the ladies from the men, from the boys, from the whatever. Um, how many of the seven brightest stars in the plough can you name? You get one point for each, and you and there's an extra. <laughs> I, I, I didn't catch all that. Right. How many of the seven brightest stars in the plow? And for our American listeners, that's uh, the Big Dipper, or King Charles Wayne, as another name for it. How many of the seven brightest stars in the plow can you name? You get one point for each, and there's an additional eight points on offer if oh. you can put them in order of brightness. Flipping out. <laughs> I'll give up on that one. <laughs> what do I get for no? <laughs> uh, minus one. <laughs> How many did you get for just one star? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one point for each, Pete. Right, I, I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> and just to, um, if it helps, which it probably doesn't, thinking about it, no. Um, all of the names in common with a lot of stars in the night sky, they're Arabic names. That doesn't help. No, no. Well, <laughs> I'm trying, Pete. I'm really trying to help. I, uh, yeah, you know you're uh, trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we've got <laughs> El, El Sahib. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Al Deberan, of course. Uh, uh, any star beginning with the prefix Al is, is an Arabic name. So if Al we just put Al, se if we put Al seven times, the chances are we might be close. You might be. But yeah. then, Al tomato. Yeah. <laughs> Al pineapple. Al yeah. pineapple. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Question six then. Um, in what year was the first exoplanet discovered? Oh, oh, got an idea on that. Now listen, when I say discovered, there were a lot of claims before this about people who found exoplanets. So this was the first official discovery of an exoplanet. What year was that? <clears throat> That's for one point. Yeah. Um, number t uh, the, the second part of this question, oh. apart oh. from the fact that it was an exoplanet, what was the big surprise about this planet? There was a big surprise about it, apart from the fact it was uh, the first detection of a, a star, uh, a planet orbiting another star. It oh, was yeah, I, I remember that. Right. And number three, again, for one point, can you name either of the two astronomers involved in the discovery? Is this all question six, is it, Andy? Yeah, this is all question oh, six. Sorry. It's three okay. parts, yeah. 
I've just answered that third part with a definite no. <laughs> <laughs> That's an honest answer. We like that. <laughs> what so, was the what was the final part of that question? Sorry, Andy. Can you name either of the two astronomers involved in the discovery? Okay. Um, so I just go over that again. In which year? The, uh, it's three parts to this question six. In what year was the first exoplanet discovered? Apart from the fact it was an exoplanet, what was the major surprise about it? And can you name either of the two astronomers involved in the discovery? Okay. Move so on. I'm, not, I'm not Googling, I'm answering a question. No, I, else. Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. you thousands wouldn't. Because, thousands. Well, no, because I'm, I'm very honest, I am Googling. So Because the, an, the answer to the question I've actually written down is no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question seven. <sighs> Who links the, the following? There's one person who links all of the following. Okay. And it's four parts. Ooh, yeah, First yeah. part, Penthouse magazine. Hey. Who links what? Penthouse magazine. Uh, what's that got to do? What? I, I missed that. I was just a, a sort of listener out. Go on. Do try to keep up. Okay. <laughs> so who links the following? And this is four parts, Pete. Four things I'm going to give you, and one person links them all. Okay. Go on then. Penthouse magazine. Penthouse right. magazine, right. Second, John Archibald Wheeler. Oh, right. Go on. Third, the film Interstellar. And lastly, the 2017 Nobel Prize for Physics. That's Penthouse Magazine, John Archibald Wheeler, the film Interstellar, and the 2017 Nobel Prize for Physics. One person links all of those. Who is it? Hmm. Right. I've got an answer, but it, I know it's not right, but I've had to put <laughs> yeah, something. I've, I've got loads of answers here. I've got I know an answer, not right. but, well. <laughs> Okay. Oh um, question eight. Fairly straightforward. Andy, can I just say at this point, I hate you. Thank you yeah. very much. I yeah, love you okay, too. From the heart. From the heart. <laughs> uh, question eight. This should be fairly easy after that one. I'll give you an easy one. Okay. What is the opposite of the following terms? What is the opposite of the following terms? First one. There are four of them. First one, zenith. Mm -hmm. What's the opposite of the zenith? Second one, apogee. What's the opposite of apogee? Yeah. Third one, the first point of Aries. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, I've never think of that one. Yeah. And and the and the final one. Solstice. The opposite of solstice. Mm. Mm. I mean, mm. solstice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna come back to that. I have to. I have to be fair with this one. Solstice does not have an exact opposite, but it's pretty damn close in terms of what it mm. means. Okay. I'm trying to get a damn word. Okay. Oh, my head's hurting. <laughs> my opposite to the solstice is not the solstice. <laughs> the anti-solstice. The anti-solstice. Anti yeah. <laughs> what you take okay. for indigestion, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, number nine uh, is another who am I? We had an American astronomer uh, last time. So this is, I am a British astronomer born in 1918 in Brighton. During the war, I worked on antennae for airborne radar equipment. After returning to Cambridge as a lecturer, I worked on new observing techniques for radio astronomy, including interferometry and aperture synthesis. Oh, that's the simple one. Yeah. Uh, my group at Cambridge created the first multi-element astronomical radio interferometer. I became director of the Mullard Radio Astronomy Observatory in 1957. In 1974, I received the Nobel Prize for Physics. These days, I am mainly remembered for creating the mathematical model behind VLBI, or Very Long Baseline Interferometry. Mm. And you may remember that VLBI was the technique used to capture the image of the black hole in M87. Um, That's messed my answer up. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah. uh, lastly, I died in 1984. 
And this mm. is for five points. Brilliant. So I'll just read that again quickly. If my answer's still alive, he's going to be upset with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, just go over that again quickly. Who am I? I'm a British astronomer born in 1918 in Brighton. During the war, I worked on antennae for airborne radio equipment. After returning to Cambridge University as a lecturer, I worked on new observing techniques, <clears throat> radio astronomy, including interferometry and aperture synthesis. Mm. My group at Cambridge created the first multi-element astronomical radio interferometer. Excuse me. I became director of the Mullard Radio Astronomy Observatory in 1957. In 1974, I received the Nobel Prize for Physics. These days, I'm mainly remembered for creating the mathematical model behind VLBI, or Very Long Baseline Interferometry. VLBI was used to capture the first ever image of a black hole with the Event Horizon Telescope. I died in 1984. British astronomer. Mm. Okay. Mm. They've got lots of head shaking going on here. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, number 10. Last question, guys. Um, this should be fairly straightforward, I think. I thought uh, that was number 10. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> what happened there? Oh. Question number nine was all the opposites. No, question number nine was, was who am I? Question oh. eight was the opposites. Oh, damn. Question seven was who links the following? Question six right, so was the exoplanet. Got it? I'll catch up when we do the oh, answers. Right. It's oh, okay. Right. okay. Silly me. Yeah, the numbers aren't important. Okay, okay, so the final question, guys and listeners. Um, in which year did the following events occur? And there are one, two, three, four, five of them. God. Okay, one point for each. Okay, uh, number one, the discovery of Uranus. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Number two, Mariner 4 flies past Mars. Number three. Valentina Tereshkova becomes the first woman in space. Number four, John F. Kennedy commits America to going to the moon. Mm, and lastly, the very last bit of everything, Albert Einstein takes a job as a patent clerk. Just go over those again. The discovery of Uranus. Mariner 4 flies past Mars. Valentina Tereshkova becomes the first woman in space. John F. Kennedy commits America to going to the moon. And Albert Einstein takes a job as a patent clerk. Oh, there we and go. one point for each of those. And in which year did they occur? Obviously, guess, 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 guess. If you don't know the answer, just yes, guess. Absolutely, Dave. It's absolutely. all fun. So what we're going to do now, uh, listeners, we're going to go over to another track and then we'll come back. And Andy will just refresh us on what the questions were for anybody that missed them, and then we'll have the answers. This is Among the Ruins uh, from uh, Rick Armstrong, Neil Armstrong's son. How was that, guys? That wasn't too difficult. Uh, interesting. <laughs> Come back over to the chat now. So are we all ready for the answers, are we? Would well... anybody like me to... <laughs> Would anybody like me to go over them again? Shall I go over them again very briefly for the listeners? I, I think so. I think it might yeah. be okay. uh, nice for you to do that. Right. Question one, which of the following technologies, or which, of the, which two of the following technologies um, did not emerge from the space program? Scratch-resistant mm. lenses for glasses, the audio cassette tape, memory foam, Teflon, or self-driving tractors? Uh, question two, who am I? I'm an American astronomer born in 1927. I was a fellow of the Carnegie Institute, uh, worked at Mount Wilson and Palomar observatories. I researched the evolution of galaxies, published a, an atlas of galaxies in 1966, which is still in use. I was known for my controversial views about quasars and the Big Bang, won loads of awards and I died in 2013. Question three, what comes next in this sequence? Mimas Enceladus Tethys, and what's the next one? True or false, a young Albert Einstein contemplated insurance as a career. Sir Patrick Moore's first job after the war was as an encyclopedia salesman. Excuse me. Sir Isaac Newton made the first theoretical calculation at the speed of sound. Carl Sagan's father was born in Finland. Schrodinger's cat in real life was named Hans. Brian Cox is an active member of the Roundheads and Cavaliers Historical Reenactment Society. Apologies to any readers, listeners out there who don't know who uh, Sir Patrick Moore or Brian Cox are, uh, but there you are. Uh, okay, question five. How many of the seven brightest stars in the plough can you name? One point for each. 
and you get eight extra points for putting them in order of brightness. Question six, in what year was the first exoplanet discovered? What was the big surprise about it? And can you name any of the two or either of the two astronomers involved in the discovery? Question seven, who links the following? Penthouse Magazine, John Archibald Wheeler, the film Interstellar, and the 2017 Nobel Prize for Physics. Question eight, what's the opposite of the following terms? Zenith, apogee, the first point of Aries and solstice. Who am I? Question nine, I'm a British astronomer born in 1918 in Brighton, worked on radar equipment in the war. At Cambridge, I worked on radio astronomy, including interferometry and aperture synthesis. My group at Cambridge created the first multi-element astronomical radio interferometer. I became director of the Mallard Radio Astronomy Observatory in 1957, got the Nobel Prize for Physics in 74. I mainly remember for creating the mathematical modeling behind VLBI or very long baseline interferometry. And that's the technique used by radio telescopes to capture the first ever image of a black hole. I died in 1984. And lastly, question 10, in which, event, in which years did the following events occur? The discovery of Uranus, Mariner 4 flies past Mars, Valentina Tereshkova becomes the first woman in space, John F. Kennedy commits America to going to the moon, and Albert Einstein takes a job as a patent clerk. And there you go. And thank you for taking part, listeners. <laughs> Well, we'll thank, you. we'll thank you when we've heard the answers. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, the, the judge's uh, decision is final. Who's the judge? Okay. Here comes the judge. Okay, are you ready and, for the answers, the everybody? We're ready for the answers. Let's go. Okay. We're, here we go. Yeah. Right, so uh, I'll give you the number of points as we go along. So question one, uh, it's, one it's a one-point answer, but you need to get both answers correct. <laughs> so... Any thoughts? Which of the two technologies were not part of the space program? Cassette player. Yeah, and I'm going to go for Teflon as well. Cassette and Teflon. Teflon. Cassette I'm and going Teflon. To, I'm yeah. going to go for scratching glasses and and, and memory foam. But to I be went different. glasses and Teflon. I'm what, going to go what? for audio tape and self-drive tractors. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Uh, difference of opinion. Yeah. The actual two correct answers are the audio cassette tape and Teflon. Yeah. Well, I was totally wrong oh, on cool. that one. Yeah. Um, I, I just, just a little bit of background. The, the bit about the self-driving tractors, NASA developed a technique to refine GPS uh, so that it's accurate <laughs> to within an inch. Uh, and they developed the technology that enabled uh, self-driving tractors. And in the American Midwest, a lot of the tractors these days are self-driving. Uh, they're, they're autonomous tractors and it's NASA technology behind them. We've so got them are. here. If you go down the A5 at night, for near <laughs> Oxford Street, and you look in the field, there's tractors going backwards and forwards, and Daz will tell you that, that they've got yeah. no drivers in them. Yeah, yeah there you are. Yeah. Aliens. Aliens. In yeah. fact, the bloke <laughs> who invented the cassette uh, tape, he only died the other day. Which is why I mentioned it. Yes, if anybody was watching the news, yes, he yeah. died the other day. And Teflon was developed in 1947, believe it or not. Oh, okay, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, okay, question two. Did anybody get this one? Who am I? The American astronomer. Anybody, anybody get this? Yeah. Edwin yeah, Hubble. Uh, Edwin Hubble. Christian um, Halton. No, I've got Christian Halton. No, no. it was Halton Arp. Oh, oh. Mr. Arp, as in Arp. Yeah. Oh. The atlas he published was the Atlas oh, of Peculiar Christian. Galaxies, which is... Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Halton nice. Christian, is that not the same person? No. no never heard oh, of that no. person. Who's Halton Christian? Never heard of him. I don't know, that's Bit. the name that's sprung to my mind, Halton Christian. Yeah, yeah that's the name. Oh. So these well, are maybe, our maybe. galaxies, uh, the, all oh. these brown patches and things, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Sorry, Pete, over to you. Uh, the, 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 no, no point in it being over to me. I haven't got anything yet. Oh, well, I thought okay. you were <laughs> saying something. <laughs> Give me a sec, guys. Give me a sec. He may have, he may have gone under a pseudonym. Let's find out. He wasn't yeah, under the name of Julian Onions, project. was he? What have you got? <laughs> Halton Christian, you say? You've got a yeah. neat writing, Rachel. Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, he was also known as Halton Christian. You're correct. Welcome, oh, we welcome well, to hi, Julian. You get, <laughs> you get um, you get five points for that. Julian, if welcome I... to the answers to the quiz. But as he's oh, reading right. them out, you can answer them before he gives the answers, if you like. <laughs> is it forty-two? Oh. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and Andy, can, Andy, can you say that answer to that question again, please, for the listeners? Yeah, it's it's Halton either. Holton Arp or Holton Christian. And isn't that strange? Wow. I've never heard him referred to as Holton Christian. I've always known him as, as Holton Arp. 
Um, okay. Christian was his middle name. So if he was known as Holton Christian, then then fine. But I got that name in my head from somewhere. And I don't yeah, know. Isn't that strange? Anyway, I, I well had done. that name as well. Yeah. Mm. Jonathan, you got it as well, didn't you? Well, I thought it was Christian Holton. So, but Holton Christian is, you know, a really good <laughs> yeah. name. A really, a really, right. There you go. Yeah, it's there. Oh, there we are. It's there. It's there. Okay, fine. Great. Okay. Uh, question three. What comes next in this sequence? Mimas, Enceladus, Tethys, Julian? Dione. Yeah, Dione. 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 Everybody uh -huh. agreed on Dione? Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I didn't put that. It's Dione, yes. No. Those being the four innermost moons of Saturn in order from mm. the planet outwards. Okay. I've got a point. I've got That's a point. Pete's hey. got a point. Pete's got a point. Okay. okay. Question four, true or false? A young Albert Einstein contemplated insurance as a career. Is that true yes. or false? I think it's true. Probably true. true. It's got to be true, hasn't it? True. It is true. Yeah. He did actually decide, he actually was going to study insurance at college. Luckily for the world, yeah. he didn't. No, good Ironic job. if he had, he probably wouldn't have been in an encyclopedia after that. that that's right. That's, <laughs> that's very strange, true. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, next one uh, for one point. These these are one point answers. Uh, oh, right. Sir Patrick Moore's first job after the war was as an encyclopedia salesman. When times were tough and you know there weren't many jobs about after the war, was it true that Albert Einstein was an encyclopedia? Uh, sorry, Sir Patrick Moore was an encyclopedia salesman. And what on the same? I've got to say <laughs> yes, yes, he, 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 he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. you you all think he did? Yeah, yeah. It's nonsense, of course. Of course <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, again, for one point. So Isaac Newton made the first theory, uh, theoretical calculation at the speed of sound. Uh, I, I put false. I put false. false. Yeah. Yeah. false. It's actually true. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The apple yeah. never made a noise. <laughs> it did many hits on the earth, boing. <laughs> okay, uh, next one for one point. Carl Sagan's Excellent. father was from Finland. No, it's New York. False. False. Yeah, false. 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 It is false. He was actually from the Ukraine. Oh, right. false. false. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. He was, his father was born in the Ukraine. They, he lived in New York, but he was actually born oh. in the Ukraine. He could have yeah. visited Finland at some point. <laughs> right. Is that his okay. passport? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, next one. Schrodinger's cat in real life was a tabby cat named Hans. <laughs> I thought oh, it was knees or bumps a daisy. <laughs> what do you think? True or false? false. I just false. I just put false. True. I just put true. Well, uh, the answer to this question about Schrodinger's cat, of course, is both true and false. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So you get the point, whatever you wrote down. <laughs> the answer... That's a trick question. Guaranteed way to make sure we got one point at least. Was Absolutely. It? I'm going to be kind to you. Oh, I? That's, I, 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 I like that question. That's a good one. Though. Yeah, yeah the, the answer is actually false. But uh, but I will give you a point because technically it's true and false at the same time. Of and it's actually a rock band from the Bavarian area of Germany. Uh, Thank you cool. for that, Pete. I just thought I'd let you know. I'll okay. give Pete a bonus point. I like that. Yeah. No, no. no. Oh, don't <laughs> I need all the bonus points. No, no favoritism, Kath. No favoritism. <laughs> lastly, Marco. lastly, la calm down. Hey, calm don't down. put us off. Calm down. Uh, lastly, is this true that um, Professor Brian Cox is an active member of the Roundheads and Cavaliers Historical oh. Reenactment Society? Well, I thought I'll, I'll go out on a limb here. And, and either uh, put true or on. false. I've got to say false, but it oh, found I've to got be a true, vision of him dressed up. Band, didn't he? Didn't he play in a band? Yeah, 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 he played. He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 he played. He when only get worse. Yeah, the best, the best yeah. band he played in was Dare. They were a lot better than Dee Reed. Yeah, yes. they were actually it difficult, right. would it really? Right. He even had beautiful hair back then as well. Yeah, um, amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, is it true that he was a member of the? Yeah, Roman why not? Why not? False. <laughs> no, it's yeah. nonsense. Of course, it's false. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Ryan, oh, Ryan, Co Ryan Cox answered true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're my fantasies, Andy. Yeah, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably, Kath. Um, so, anyway, so th that was a true or false question for one point for each if you got them right. Okay. Obviously, not if you got them wrong. Well, and of course, a one point for Schrodinger's cat, whatever you wrote down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, question five. How many? Now, this was <sighs> this was a tricky one. I I will admit, but that's why it's a five point question with eight 
uh, bonus points for getting them in order of brightness. How many of the seven brightest stars in the plough can you name? I've, I've got to go for a couple of them. Alcor, Merrick, Dubé. Uh, Al, 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 Al Noif. I can't even pronounce Al-Noif. it. Al-Noif. Al-Noif. I just about, yeah, that one. Alcoid? Did you say Alcoid? Alcor. Alcoid. I was close. Al Tomato. Al Tomato. <laughs> let me let me oh, give it to you. I'm going to give it to you in order of brightness for brightness first. Okay. Go on then. Okay. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce some of these. So uh, anybody out there who does know how to pronounce them uh, properly, I, I do apologize. Uh, Dubé. Yeah. 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 Frank Sinatra Merak. star. That one. Merak. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. This is an order of brightness. Don't forget brightest first. Yeah, I'm just ticking them because I've got them right. They're not in order. <laughs> All right. Um, Can I just point out, Andy, they're actually in the order of brightness from the pointers as you come around to the handle. Are they really? I no. believe so, yeah. Are they really? <laughs> Sounded good, though. <laughs> it did, didn't it? It did. Yeah, you have been going there for a I, I think it's actually the, the way it's, it's, it's alpha, beta, gamma, delta in, right. in the order okay. of the, uh, letters. Now, anyway. where was I? Uh, right, so yes. um, Polaris. Mirac. Uh, <laughs> um, the third brightest, the gamma oh. Ursa major, is Fector. Yeah, how'd you say, how'd you say that again? Fector, Fe- Fector, <laughs> it's P H E C D A. Fector, it's not far okay. from Sphincter. <laughs> <laughs> far enough, <laughs> okay. Uh, next one, Megrez. <laughs> Megrez. M E G R E Z. That's Delta Ursa Major. Mm. Alioth. That's the Yay. one. <laughs> that was the Epsilon. one I was trying to pronounce. Dave, you're going to kick yourself. It's not Alcor. It's Mizar. It's the other one. Yay. Alcor is right because we did. We chatted about that off air. Yeah, you know, trying to remember. So um, Mizar is actually the brighter one. Yeah, Mizar is the brighter one. Yeah. Um, Alcor is not one of the. Alcor is not one of the seven brightest. Okay. For obvious reasons. And lastly, Al Cade. A L K A I D. Yeah, I had Al Core as One well. point for I'm each of those and um, an additional eight points if you get them in the correct order of brightness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Question six then. In what year was the first exoplanet discovered officially? Oh. Anybody? I put 1995. 1997? I put 96. 96. Any other answers? I was, I was around the 96. I've got 92. Well done, Rachel. It's 1992. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> that's a complete that, guess. I'll put that first. Oh, yeah, and then, then thought, no, it's 1995. Uh, okay. Uh, um, it wasn't. Apart from the fact it was an exoplanet, the first planet ever to be found orbiting another star, what was the big surprise about it? It was orbiting a white pulsar. 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 Yeah. Orbiting Orbit a pulsar. pulsar. A little oh. star. Yes, yeah. One point for that. These these are one point answers, which was a you know a big and it's still a big surprise how a planet can survive a supernova explosion. Yeah. So uh, it wasn't shaped like a tomato. No. What was this with tomatoes tonight? If you know? I keep saying tomato to every question, it's bound to come right uh, at yeah. one point. I'm sorry Pizza. to disappoint you, mate. It's the law of uh, right. tomatoes. Okay. Um, the third part. Can you name either of the two astronomers involved in that discovery? No. Are you frail? Well done. Well and done, Jonathan. Alexander Walzan. Well, well done. You got both of you. Tell you what, Jonathan, but you're glad you come on yeah. here tonight. Yeah, right, yeah. You're, you're coming not again. coming on the next quiz, that's yeah. it. Yes. <laughs> you're on my team. It was the immortally named Dale Frail and um, Alexander Walzan. I'll spell mm-hmm. that for you. W-L-S, W-O-L-S-Z-C-Z-A-N. So that's a fantastic Scrabble score there. Um, but um, but there we are. So yeah, well done, Jonathan. Anybody else get either of those? No. I put no. Smith and Jones. <laughs> <laughs> a good guess, alas, but not all the same, alas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question seven. Did anybody get this? Who links Penthouse Magazine, John Archibald Wheeler, the film Interstellar, and the 2017 John novel? Wheeler, Russia? wasn't he an archeologist? No. Uh, General no. Relativities. No. Brian, yeah, I was going to say Brian Cox, but it's not. But go on. Uh, uh, incidentally, John Archibald Wheeler has gone down in history because he was the first man to coin the term black hole, just out of interest. Oh. Yeah. Um, that, that's a good pub quiz question, um, if you go to those sorts of pubs anyway. It's really interesting, though. Yeah. Uh, the person who links all of those is Kip Thorne. Ah. Uh, because... Okay. 
Um, he had a bet with Stephen Hawking about the black hole in Cygnus X1, and um, Stephen Hawking lost. So Stephen Hawking bought him, as agreed under the terms of their bet, a year's subscription to Penthouse magazine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. oh, yeah. It's true, okay. true story. Mm. Okay. Um, and much go. to the disgust of Kip Thorne's wife, apparently, but, uh, but there you are. Uh, John, John Archibald Wheeler was Kip Thorne's supervisor at Caltech. Um, he was, of course, scientific advisor for the film Interstellar, mm -hmm. and he won the 2017 Nobel Prize for Physics. So there you are, Kip Thorne. Yeah. Kip yeah. Thorne, is a name to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's a, a, fa a fascinating mm. talk. If you, uh, he, quite a few of his talks are on YouTube. Look them up. They're really, really good on black holes and things like that. Okay, the opposite of the following terms then, Zenith. Nadir. 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 Yes. yes, absolutely. Oh, I've got a point. <laughs> yeah, um, apogee. Perigee. 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 The Perigee. first point of Aries. Ah, that's why I'm trying to think 12 hours around the constellations. You'll, you'll kick yourself. I know. You're, you're quite right. Obviously, it's on the ecliptic. It's yep. actually the first point of Libra. Oh, what did I, I I was looking at cancer. Sorry. <laughs> Damn you. Yeah, the first Libra, point of first Libra. Point of Libra course, Does anybody yeah. want to explain to our listeners what the first point of Aries is in case they don't know? Nope. nope. No. Well, pass. Start of the RA, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's, it's zero, zero isn't it? Zero hours. It's the zero hour of the right ascension. Okay. Well, right. Yeah. Well, due to uh, but these days, these days, because of precession, it's not in Aries, it's in Pisces. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the zero hour for right ascension, and and obviously um, twelve hours around that is um, the the first point of Libra. There we are. You Thank can look you. it up. I'll remember you know, it next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lastly, the near opposite of solstice. Equinox. Now, equinox. But I've put equinox. But equinox. Yeah. Right. Firstly, would anybody like to explain to our listeners what a solstice is? Uh, practically, when when the sun marches north and it passes the celestial equator when it gets yeah. Uh, yeah. Or what, lowest. what happens <laughs> at that point it's equal day equal night allegedly no no no, no. go on Julie. equinox That's equinox, equinox. <laughs> yes equinox. Equi, equi. <laughs> okay yeah. solstice okay. is the highest or lowest point yes so it's the solstice is the longest day and the longest night that's what I was trying Those to say. Are the, yeah. the opposite of that, or the near opposite, is when day and night are of equal length, and that is your equinox. equinox. So the answer is equinox. Hey. See, I still I've didn't just, know it, but I got it right. Yeah. I've, <laughs> just, I've, is, is I've just had a message from some uh, Martin, and he said it's actually a festival that we run in um, Bromsgrove every year. Oh, oh, fantastic. Look. Let's the, all go to Bromsgrove. The Sonic Rock Solstice. <laughs> That's it. When this COVID's over, we're going to party. <laughs> we played at that a few times. <laughs> Oh, really? OK, uh, so um, one point for each of those opposites. Yeah. Uh, question nine. Did anybody get the British astronomer best known for the mathematical yep. model? Yeah, I'll yeah. go for Sir uh, Bernard Lovable. Uh, Martin, Martin Ryle. It is Sir Martin Ryle. Yes. Oh, well done. Sir Martin Ryle, R-Y-L-E. Yes. Without him, he wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had the... Um, probably wouldn't have had the first image of the black hole. Mm. He worked out that you can... You can uh, pair two radio telescopes separated by distance together and they function as one big dish, if you like. <clears throat> and that's how they took the image of the black hole. And if anybody wants to know more about how they captured that image, I actually do a talk on it. So if you want to book me for that, anybody, you're more than welcome. You're next month, April, for North Wales. Don't oh, am I? Yourself. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have a <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I've, I've got a busy April coming. I've been, been booked three times in April. Oh, this I, I, I just forgot to... for weddings, weddings <laughs> for birthdays <laughs> and barvitzes. <laughs> and kinky parties. Oh, yeah, oh, we'll, we'll go there. That's why you're not allowed back in the country. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell. Okay. Uh, so, uh, lastly, last question then, guys. Right. Uh, but we, we, sh we should shout the answer out, Andy, before... before uh, Simon says because he'll know the answer. You reckon? I yeah. think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so which which year did the following events take place? Number one, the discovery of Uranus. 1781. 1781. 1781. Oh, in a garden in Bath. Did you know it was in Bath? It was in Bath. <laughs> 
No uh, idea. And Salah said, that's where I live. Uh. <laughs> Bath, was that where Herschel was when he observed it and he found it? Is indeed, there a museum indeed. there by any chance? They, oh, yeah. Wow, wow. And there's this really weird thing of Caroline wasn't there that night. Wasn't where she? was she? Down she the pub. Down away. the pub. Why? <laughs> oh. Maybe oh. she discovered it the night before. Conspiracy. No, oh, yeah. dear. Go, 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 go. Okay. Captured by aliens. Uh, so one point <laughs> for... Uh, 1781. Okay. As, 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 <sighs> 1781. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> what was okay. that? What was that, Simon? 240th anniversary. Just... Do the math quick. Do the math quick. Uh, uh, it, it's what? 13th of March. How do you not know this? Uh, Ooh, because I today's not the 13th of that. March. Two I days knew. ago. I was two why, days out on me. Answer. Simon, Simon, why do you think I put this in the quiz? For well, exactly this reason. See if anybody been paying oh, attention. Which you obviously <laughs> didn't need to, but there you are. Okay. Simon's got rather excited then. Yeah, yeah. Calm, calm down. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Calm down. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Right. Uh, second part. Man of four flies oh, past dear. Mars. 1965. Mm, 1974. It's 1964. 1965, it was. Oh. Oh. Well done, Kat. Okay, um, one point for each of these. I said, Valentina Tereshkova becomes the first woman in space. 1963. 63, it was. Yay. Yeah. John, John F. Kennedy commits America to going to the moon. Um, 1962. I put 62, 61. but maybe 61. 61. 61. 61. Oh. Hey. Oh. He, he got assassinated in 62, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he did. I, I, I just thought oh, that was sad. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Albert Einstein takes a job as a patent clerk. 1902 to <laughs> 1907. 1927. 1928. 1902 to 1909. 1901. 1901. What year was he born? He was born in 1879, Dave. At a very early age. Yeah. He had to paper rounds when he was 12. Okay, so there we are. Um, Anybody want me to go oh. back over any of the answers? <laughs> oh, no. Right, what I'm going to do while you go back over the answers for the uh, for the panel, Five. I shall go to a track, and this is Jefferson Starship and Jane. Uh, oh God, I thought you were going to say we built this city. Ugh. Derek has just uh, uh, emailed in to say that he got. I'll read these these scores out first before we go over to the panel. Derek's just emailed in to say he got ten. Um, I've got 16, um, and uh, Tien in Japan said he got four. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike uh, over in, oh, down in Red Ruth, he said he got 12, um, and we've got Stefan in uh, Moscow said he's got a miserable five, and um, oh, what's that? Yeah, and... Uh, He's, he just puts his name down as John. I don't think it's his real name, but John over in Iran said he got all the ones in the plough right and nothing else. <laughs> That's more than what we got. <laughs> he said, score, basically, because yeah. they're all Arabic names oh, and you said it was easy. Yeah. And he said, I know Arabic names. And he says, I can always come on air one night and tell you how to, how to pronounce them as well. <laughs> Why he says, welcome to do that. Please do. Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Um, so those are the scores I got in via email so far. There'll be some more coming in. So, yeah, I got 16. So... That was pretty rough, really, uh, to be fair. To be fair, but um, you know, there you go. That's life. Sometimes that happens, and and, and I'm going to cut the panel off now because I've, I've just fed up with a whole lot of them. And Sandy's <laughs> he's peed me off no end. I'm just going to say <laughs> good night. So <laughs> okay, let's go around the uh, let's go around the old panel room now. Let's go with Dave in, in the order that's around my screen. There is it might be different order on your screens, but on my screen, Dave. Well, I'd like first I'd like to say a lot of respect for everybody out there listening who were honest with their answer. Mm. I'd like to say that I got 49 right, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> and my honest answer is I only got 12. <laughs> but there we go. It's just uh, for fun. Just Daz, for fun. Daz. Uh, the dog at me paper, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I had, I had, um, I've got 18. Oh, there we go. So we, we, we're, you're out in front at the moment. You're, you're out in front. Won't be there long, don't worry. No, no. Roger? 11. Uh, oh, that's, good that, that, respect. that's respectable. 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 Yeah. It's not great, but it's respectable. <laughs> Jonathan? Uh, 16. 
Oh, 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 He's still, he's still out there. Well, oh, here we right. go. Here we go next now. Simon. Well, it's a long time since I've been called it, but apparently I'm respectable. Oh, really? Just 11. I know that's respectable. Uh, that's nothing respectable. wrong with that. Let's be proud. Uh, we're going on to Kath now. We're going on to the Gin Queen of New Orleans. Uh, <laughs> She's that Gin Queen of New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> but we Kath, love the Gin's obviously working because I've got 19. Oh, Whoa. she's well out in front. Cat's out in front. Cat's I've, I've out counted in front. it three times to make sure, but I didn't did get 19. She you have got the paper upside down, have you? <laughs> uh, and it's 16 or 61. <laughs> it's 61, 61. Ma- math was never your strong point, was it, Dave? <laughs> so it was. Ju- Julian didn't take part, so just make up a score, Julian. I got 180. And there we go. <laughs> hey. 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 And, and Rachel, finally, Rachel. finally, Rachel. I got 13, but to be fair, four of them were complete guesses in the true or false round. No, no, and I no, guess 1992. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, no, let's go. be honest, I'd only got 11 if uh, Schrodinger's cat was. <laughs> we had to give a right answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, I like that answer. That was a good one. The winner, the winner tonight, and, and actually, Kath won the last uh, yeah. Astro Radio quiz as well. Yeah, um, theme running here now. Is Kath mm. two, two running? And that means I am Kath... reading my books. I, I am ah. reading a lot of astronomy books lately. So yeah. maybe that's where I'm going wrong. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's, to... that's, that's where... I'm relying I'm relying on memory now and I can't remember most things that happened yesterday. Um mm. I think what we need to do now is each time there's a winner, they've got to be the person who sets the next quiz. Ah, uh, yeah. that yeah, good idea. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, because so I, I won loads of times. So, you know, that's why I did the quiz. Tonight. Well, yeah, no problem. we know we, you went you went through a spell of winning loads of times. The yeah. fact was you were the only one in on Zoom at the time. But I would do a quiz. But yeah, Andy, Cap, Andy Cap took your crown. Yeah, Cap Andy did go crown. through a spell of uh, winning on a on a regular basis. Um so now Cass took the crown. So Cass sets the next quiz. Okay. And when she's got that ready, we'll Kath. announce that we're doing it. I'm the right that she's got it ready. So, um, mm-hmm. so there we go. Well done, Kat. Well done, Kat. Yeah. I, I will. Have, to, have I got to do 10, 10 questions for the quiz? You That's could do as many as you like. Okay. Will there be a gin, think... round? a gin round? A gin round. Oh, it's going to be a gin yeah, round, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a gin round. You can have questions it. like, has it got what? to all be space, or can I put a bit of sci fi in there as well? Oh, go on. Yeah, why not? Ooh, a bit of sci-fi. How about like an answer such as oxygen, nitrogen? <laughs> what is the chemical symbol for nitrogen? I might ch- I'll chuck a couple of sci-fi questions in there because that yes, might yes, let's go. Oh, yeah. That might help people. And my <clears throat> questions won't be as hard as Andy's. Let's face it, because they, they just won't be. It won't be that cool. Oh, I've just got it. will be got harder. It. <laughs> got a, I've got a message in from Rob. He's uh, he's in Perth, not Perth, Scotland, mm-hmm. Perth, Australia. Okay. And he said, um, I've got to admit to this. He says, I'm going to admit it on air. I got nil. <laughs> oh, nil point. That's fine. Nothing to be ashamed okay. of that. Well, he says, he said he's got, he's, he so says it's got to be bad. He says, I even got Schrodinger's cat one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so can I, just, uh, can I just say thank you to all our listeners who took part? And uh, guys on the panel, I hope, I hope you didn't find it too difficult. I tried. Oh, to thank you, Andy. That was a, a bit no, of a, mi- a, quite a mixture there, wasn't it? It was quite fun. Yeah, well I don't, done, I don't think I'll write as good a quiz as you, Andy, but I'll try. Oh, I'm oh sure I don't know, Kat. Get them sci-fi questions in there. I'll chuck a few sci-fi questions Yeah. <laughs> right, what we'll do, we'll go to another track and we'll come back and we'll have a chat for the last half an hour about stuff in the news, uh, astronomical stuff in the news, and it's not Yeah, news. what's going on in the news? Oh. What's in not the, news, the general Jim? news. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to depress no. myself. No. Um, this is Three Doors Down, and uh, what we've just had in the panel there is the time of my life. <laughs> I think or anything like that? They've all left. No, it's just me we're and all you smiling. It's only, us, only us two now. That's it. <laughs> They've walked um, out and discussed, Pete. Cat's smiling, so yeah, what yeah. can you say? Yeah. The cat that got the milk. So, Andy, what have we got Cat going on? What, what have we got going on in space news this week? I know you've done your usual Astro Radio show, which I was uh, sitting back today with my feet up, listening to some of the nice tunes you put in as well. So, uh, did you really enjoy good. it? Yeah, really, really good. I mean, people are starting to like that. They, you're starting to develop your own show. I think you might need to go up to an hour and put more music in. 
Okay, well, that's I can do that. But do you know how many listeners we get for that, Pete? Just out of interest. Uh, right, I think for this week alone, if you take every day, uh, well, last week, sorry, not this mm. week because we're only on Monday. Yeah. Um, if we take last week, calculating up the figures for last week, with if you take each day, I think you clocked up to just under a million. Oh, wow. that's pretty good. That's wow. pretty good. So it's not bad. Well, thank you. Thank you to all my listener. And the family. And their families, yeah. And it's the, the same person. They just keep coming back and listening over and over again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, whatever floats your boat, that's what I say. But I, I think, I, I mean, the word, I have had some requests that, uh, that, that, that you take it to, because some of the tunes you're choosing, they've not heard before. So uh, take that one up to an hour. I think. Okay, I will do. I will do. Um, it, I mean, this is, you know, there's a caveat to this, if I can find the time at weekends, because my, my daughter well, I, is rather demanding at 10 well, years. Well, I mean, keep it, keep it to half an hour till you've got time, and then and then we'll take it to an hour when you... No, when I'm, you, I'm, when sure, you I'm sure I can bump it up immediately, Pete. I will do that. And of course, okay. we've, we've, we've also, before we go to your news, uh, we've also got Jonathan Powell now doing near-Earth objects. Um, Jonathan's based down in uh, uh, South Wales. And he's doing near Earth object news each week as well. So yeah, I saw that. I hadn't had a chance to listen. So um, and Dave Eagles considering coming on and doing um, a week or a, a monthly sky guide. So that would be good as well. So Dave, a monthly waiting. sky dive. Mm. Yeah, sky dive. He's going to dive straight <laughs> off the top, right into the bottom. <laughs> I mean, do it once, but not every month. That's really pushing, pushing. Yeah, luck, is it? <laughs> they get more to get better. <laughs> on alternate, on alternate months, he's doing a bungee jump. But there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay, Andy, Andy, come back again. Andy, do your space news before we okay. get any. I just, just very, very briefly. Then, um, just basically about SpaceX. Uh, SpaceX tested their. Starship SN11 today, the latest in the prototype, they were doing the static fire engine test today. It was aborted uh, after the engines had actually started igniting, so something went very wrong. They didn't recycle it for today. There was obviously a problem. Uh, they're going to try again tomorrow. Um, and if, if, if they manage to do the static fire tomorrow, there's still a good possibility that it will do its test flight before the end of the week. Ow. So, uh, you know, if they can sort the problems out, obviously. The um, NASA did the first, um, or they've fully assembled now the solid rocket boosters for the SLS, their mega rocket space launch system. They've finally assembled the solid rocket boosters and they're doing the uh, the green run test. When, when was it, Daz? Thursday. Thursday. Thank you. Thursday. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're trying again to test the engines of the SLS on Thursday, but after yeah. the last time, which when the engines were meant to run for eight minutes to simulate uh, and ascend into orbit, and they shut down after 62 seconds, they had a problem. So, uh, uh, Daz and I were saying earlier, if they don't get this right soon, um, it's been the subject of two congressional investigations about the fact that it's $13 billion over budget. Um, and, um, you know, if, if they don't get some good results soon, then, uh, you know, it will have to be scrapped. There's, there's yeah. no way around it, because it's... Yeah, they're losing customers already, and they haven't even started yet. So, uh... Well, it's, it's, it's old technology. It uses space shuttle engines, uh, space shuttle solid rocket boosters, admittedly a bit modified. Um, it's, it's a rocket without a mission. You know, it's days yeah. past, and it's never even flown. So you, you've got yeah. Starship coming up. You've got the new Vulcan booster from the ULA, which is going to be a fantastic rocket. That uses engines from Blue Origin's rocket, which hasn't even flown yet, but they've just killed their own market by giving the engines to, <laughs> to yeah. ULA. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Have to shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah, uh -huh. um, so anyway, there we are. That's my news for now, Pete. Thanks. Yeah, because yeah, also with the um, SLS, um, if they don't work um, or if things go wrong, uh, they won't be able to do a, a, a reschedule it because the engines have got to be totally stripped down and... Uh, uh, the whole unit's got to be taken apart and checked again because it's got a 12-month assembly life on uh, life time, right. so, so it has to be uh, uh, completely stripped down. And as we said, it's probably last chance saloon for them. So yeah, uh, it's the it's the actual. Do, do you remember the the failure of the O-ring yeah. that caused the yeah. the Challenger disaster? It's the O-rings on the solid rocket boosters that only last for 12 months. They got a yeah. shelf life of 12 months. So if but it doesn't also, fly 12 months. Yeah, sorry, sorry, go on. On, 
Yeah, so I was going to say, if it doesn't fly within 12 months, they've got to, they've got to yeah. completely redo the solid rocket boosters. Yeah. And after what happened with the O-rings before, that sounds a bit dodgy to me. Just a tad, yeah. Mm. Because um, also, isn't there um, a dramatised documentary um, on, is it Amazon or Netflix, um, regards the uh, what happened with uh, the Challenger and all that? Oh, I, know, I never, apparently I never it's saw supposed it. to be very good. I've never seen that. I didn't know there was a dramatized yeah. documentary. There's, there's, there's a film. Documentary. There's a film as well, which I've watched several times, because um, it was Richard Feynman who was on the um, board of inquiry, and it was his um, doggedness keeping at the uh, that actually the true answer, the true answer actually came out. Um, do you remember? Do you remember when he, um, when the guys from NASA were saying that you know temperatures didn't affect the the rubber yeah. in the O-rings? And he'd had a bit of that rubber in a glass in of ice a glass, water, yeah. and he just fished it out and yeah. just, just basically snapped it. Uh, yeah. He said, oh no, this temperature doesn't affect this. Yes, they yeah. had to change their tune pretty quick then. They did. That, that was all about denial and corporate um, uh, yeah. ass covering and stuff like that. So Everybody yeah. was guilty to some extent, yeah. from, from NASA up to Congress. Everybody it's an interesting story, hand. actually. Yeah. A lot of cost, uh, cock cost, uh, Something else, cost, cost cutting. Yeah. Of well, cost they, they cutting. were, they were, as pushing. always, going to cheapest bid. Yeah. A spectroscopy, they, they were, we can say yeah. that one. You can't say cut yeah. though. Um, <laughs> but, um, it's uh, they, they, it's because they were pushing for um, several launches, uh, in a very short time because they were looking to get the uh, the shuttle, they were trying to get the um, the government military contract to put the satellites and all that up in space, and they'd promised to. Um, uh, to do this and that's why they basically rushed and they went ahead with the launch even though the makers was it Elkron? Elkron or something like that? Yes. Yeah, uh, it said don't launch. We, we haven't launched in these parameters and we don't believe that uh, so yeah it was, it was all um, covered up and things I mean, like when, that. When you come out in the morning and the launch tower is covered in ice. Yeah. Surely somebody at that point should have said, "Whoa!" But you all know? the because uh, it wasn't the first O-ring failure. The uh, O-rings had failed several times before, mm. and they'd always failed when the temperature fell below a certain amount. Um, yeah. And it was a really it was one of the prettiest graphs ever for an engineer to see. Um, really, that. and it basically that that's what they were saying: don't launch on. Yeah. All the data says it's not safe to launch, um, yeah. but they were overruled. Actually, well, no, they weren't overruled, but they had. Do you want the contract or not? Yeah, 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 exactly. Because yeah, yeah. it was, it was, um, because mm -hmm. they, they'd seen before that, um, uh, stuff had pushed past the first O ring because yeah. there was two, two O rings, um, and uh, it pushed past because of again temperature, as uh, Simon said, um, and they could see sooting on the, the sides, so they knew it was happening, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a very, um, I'll send you the link to the, um, the, the film, um. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It's very because um, oh, who was the first lady, a U.S. lady in space? What was her name? Uh, Sally she was, Ride. That's Sally it, Sally Ride. Ride. She was on the board as well. That's right. And she yeah. basically um, was Feynman's sort of um, how can I say deep throat sort of. Uh, she was feeding him indirectly yeah. information inside information, um, yeah, because yeah. she couldn't really just come out and say, you know, what she really knew. Um, it is, it's all a cover-up. It's an interesting story. There's a book, Richard Feynman brought, wrote a book about it. It's a really good read. Um, so, yeah. But they, anyway, we <laughs> Well, this is all in hindsight, isn't it? In-depth inquiry. Uh, I do actually remember the launch. And just before they say uh, you go for a throttle up, uh, you could actually see this jet of, mm. of escaping gas coming from where, so where it normally doesn't. And it yeah. just didn't look right. And then all that happened. Horrendous. Yeah. Okay, let's say we've got to something a bit more let's happier, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, yeah. UK Fireball. We're going to come back to Andy because you observed something recently, Andy. But uh, the UK Fireball that passed over, um, well, over the uh, width of Britain, uh, it actually, debris landed on the ground for the first time. And uh, yeah. in Wiltshire, was it? Winchcombe. Okay. Yeah, Winchcombe, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It was Winchcombe. Um, a lot of it landed on the driveway um, of a family. Um, it was on the 28th of February at 10 p.m. And oh, it wow. came across sort of midway, uh, South Mid Wales, 
Yeah. Um, and then um, broke up uh, coming through Because it was seen uh, it was seen in uh, France as well. Yeah, so it, seen, it, was a, it was a really bright, bright one, yeah. yeah. Jonathan, um, you, Jonathan, have you got anything to say about that that we might not know? No, no, it was Winchcombe, obviously. It was, it was mm, yeah, yeah. Winchcombe, yeah. yeah. Okay, but, um, so... It, yeah. What's the name of the, um, so there, there was the, um, what's the tracking, the, the Society of the Tracks and all, they had all the webcams. Okay, UK Mon, I was, I was going to come to That's that. It, yeah, yeah. UK Mon, uh, or UK yeah. Monitors, yeah. Uh, basically they, uh, there's over six cameras that actually detected mm. it. Mm. Uh, our very own Mary McIntyre, uh, she picked it up on her camera, slightly off off the camera, off the uh, the field of view, but she did uh, get it, and I think it was coming directly towards, you know, in her direction. So she didn't get the best of image, but certainly caught it. And then other cameras could work out and triangulate it, its path, and then they could work out where the debris field would be. And uh, they actually found uh, remnants of it. So th there was a, a family. Um, anyone want to mention the name of the family? The Wilcox. They would become very Wilcox, famous in the UK. Yeah. The Wilcox. The Wilcox yeah. family. Yeah. And so they this, they this meteor. They had a long debate between them about whether they were going to um, announce it because they knew the media would just descend on them yes. like, you know, like flies. Yeah. And they didn't, you know, want the media attention. I mean, who would, to be quite honest, with the media these yeah. days? Uh, I mean, but they decided they, in yeah. the end that, that, you know, people needed to know about it. Yeah. So and they donated it to the Natural yeah. History Museum. Yeah, I mean, luckily they had the That's sense correct. to leave so it We'll alone. come back to that in a moment, Daz. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Carry on, Daz. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, they, they luckily they had the sense to leave it alone uh, to begin with. And you could see it in situ where it landed on their um, uh, drive. And you had basically a lump, but it was all literally surrounded by a mound of, like, sooty material. Mm. Um, apparently it's sweet. a car... <laughs> sorry? Where was sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's coming along with a vacuum later. Oh, um yeah. Carry on, it's, it's, it's a carbonaceous chondrite, uh, as they call them. And uh, in the last um, uh, 30 odd years, we've had 65,000 reported meteorites, and only 51 out of that uh, 65,000 meteorites have been uh, carbonaceous chondrites. So they are quite rare. So um, why, are, why are these quite rare? What, what's so special about these? Said, these does. are the ones that are a mixture. They're basically, when you look at them, you, you, you take a slice through them. They're um, a mixture of all the mineral, minerals. Um, mm -hmm. It's called a, a breccia. Um, uh, the actual uh, material that's inside is called breccia. And it's a mixture of mineral, minerals and organic, uh, organic compounds. And they're usually formed when something has impacted something else. So it's been spat out off of a, another asteroid or a planet of some sort. Um, and it's, they usually contain things like um, long chain molecules, like amino acids and things like that, which are really the beginnings of the building blocks of life. So they, um, they're exciting. Uh, so they, they, They're priceless because they date from before the planets. Yeah. They're primordial material from the solar nebula before the planets formed. So yeah. they're four and a half billion years old and they're very rare. The they're last really meteorite yeah. fall recovered in the UK was 30 years ago and that was a fairly common type of meteorite. Yeah. Uh, but carbonaceous chondrites are really, really rare. So they're, they're extremely valuable. And this is why the Wilcock family wanted them wanted it to go to science rather than end up in a dusty collection of meteorites, mm -hmm. you know, belonging to a collector. Because meteorites are big business these days and they're worth a fortune. A carbonaceous chondrite would fetch huge sums of money on the meteorite yeah. market yeah, yeah. Apparently the, really it, it's, be, it's been said that the vultures were out pretty quick yeah um, trying yeah. to find anybody who had a piece of this material yeah because yeah. the scientists and um the uh, uk meteor meteoronic neck but meteorite network um they were worried about people contaminating them by mishandling mm. this is why i said the these uh, people had the, the the sense to leave it where it was and for the uh the experts to come and collect it. Um, yeah. for of course, them does, like they, they found this in pristine condition as well. Uh, I yeah. did see an image several days later of a sample, and it showed you know signs of rust already. So once mm. that moisture gets at it, it's deteriorating yeah, and right. scientifically right. no good. Yeah. 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 yeah they don't want you breathing on it or touching it. With you okay hand. there? You've got five minutes uh, to chat, and then we'll go to the last track. And because okay. Rachel's joined us tonight, we'll play a track for Rachel tonight. Uh, cool. We're going to play Zona by Rammstein to finish with tonight because it's about the sun but in German. Okay so uh, 
Andy, you saw a fireball the yeah, other night. Yeah, very, uh, we've not heard any reports. Yeah, uh, just very briefly. Yeah, just uh, yeah. went outside at the, to, you know, two o'clock at night because it had been cloudy earlier. So I thought I'd just go outside and see if it was clear. And it was, it was startlingly clear. Went outside, looked east, and immediately I looked up at the sky. I saw a fireball wow. um, uh, about 45 degrees. And I watched it as it dropped right to the horizon. Magnitude? And, do you have a, an estimate? Um, oh, I would say it wasn't incredibly bright. I would say about minus three minus four something like that so bright venus brightness yeah yeah something like that i mean you, you do get them where they're incredibly bright yeah um, i remember seeing one at astro camp years ago that, that was bright enough to cast shadows you know uh, quite mm -hmm. distinct shadows as well this wasn't that bright so any I color think, um yeah very 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 light yellow almost white okay but we'd be interested in, interested to hear if anyone else observed this as well because well, I'm, I'm, uh, we're not picking anything up in the uk in with the international fireball network immediately yeah. Uh, and according to their website, they're still analysing it. So uh, let's let's wait and see what happens. If anything happens, I'll let you know. But you know, the last yeah. two I've seen, that one and the one I saw about 10 years ago in broad daylight, by just happening to look up at the right time. That's it. Look you know, up. Don't look down. Yeah, listeners, you know, you may think, oh, God, I'll never see something like that. But honestly, if you go around looking up rather than downwards, you'd be amazed at what you see. <laughs> That's so, true. Um, but d d be safe. Eh? I mean, don't. That's it. Be safe. Don't trip over. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't do a Rowan Atkinson and walk into a lamppost. You know? That's it. Okay, Andy, we just need to move on quickly because we're coming to the end of the uh, sure. programme. Uh, just on the, still on the subject of uh, meteors and meteorites, um, I, he I heard through the news uh, recently, last day or so, um, I'm rushing through this, uh, that big, huge crater the, off the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Uh, the, 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 say again? Chish Club. That's the one. Uh, yeah. uh, that's the one that maybe possibly killed off the dinosaurs. Yeah, almost. Uh, certainly. I've, re I've read a report that they actually found meteoric dust within that crater. Really? That's you big know, news. We need a bit, a bit more information on that. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just more evidence, isn't it, towards what happened back then? I don't think there's any. Forty-six really million years ago, is it? 60, yeah, sixty-five million years. Yeah. Wow, sixty-five. Yeah. 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 Fantastic news. So there we go. Yeah. Well, where, where did they get that from? I wonder, because you know they've been <laughs> a deep sea diver. I shouldn't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, deep they, down, yeah, probably, wouldn't it? Mind uh, you, it, it's it's part of the the uh, the, the craters under the water. Well, they've but, been doing drilling there the last two or three years. Right. Yeah. Uh, so they're going to take core samples. It's the first expedition where they've actually gone out to do samples from the crater itself. Yeah. Um, because it was Carlos. What was his name? Walter. Not Walter Carlos. That's a switched on Bart. Um, anyway, uh, Alvarez. Alvarez. He and his son discovered the existence of this crater by um, core samples that oil companies are done in Mexico and discarded that turned out to be full of iridium. So that's when the first suspicions were that there'd been a major impact in the area. That was back in the 60s. So, um, you know, it's taken a long time, but if they've got dust out of their core samples, that's fantastic because yeah. that will tell I, us. I, I'd like to hear more on that. Perhaps uh, yeah. by next week we can have a bit yeah, more information. I'll, 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 I'll mention that on the Week in Space next week. If that's yeah, true. but uh, let's get some facts on there, Andy. Definitely. Yeah. Lovely. We are fact people after all. Fact, not fat, fact. <laughs> well, not fat. Well, some of us might be fat with the COVID yeah. lockdown. Yeah, it's a good job you can only see us from the neck up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're, we're, gonna, we're coming to the end of the, the show. Like thank you to Jonathan for joining us for the first time. Yeah, tonight. see you the next time. Nice Jonathan. Jonathan, drop in. Yeah, in. yeah, so I'll be back. I'll yes, excellent. brilliant. I hope you will, mate. Be yeah. Before we go, Jonathan, tell us a little bit about yourself, because yeah. obviously you've not been here before. What uh, what well, society well, I met are you involved Pete, with? Um, you, yeah. you came to the Cotswold Astronomical Society. So, That's right, yeah. Um, I've sort of got back into astronomy since then. So, um, so yeah, so uh, I'm 52, living in Gloucester, married to two daughters. Wife's currently at work. Um, I work the well, full time, the job I work for Pete, I've worked for BT for 32 years. Uh, but I've been off work for the last five months. I've had a major operation last year in oh. Dudley, so I'm just recovering, the final stage of recovering from that. Oh. Um, and I'm just waiting for a new telescope, so I've ordered um, uh, a Celestron Edge. Mm. Um, I've got right. everything else. I've got my cameras. I've got a couple of hyper cameras. I've got an eagle. Um, I've had a pier put in my garden, take some trees down. 
So I've got all that ready. I just just need the telescope, and I'll be ready to go. Good luck. You you haven't received a big wooden spoon by any chance, have you? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I uh, think there may be one. The, Maybe one wing of this. Paid off the mortgage though. Which is yeah. <laughs> always good to pay off the mortgage. It's, it's, I know it's it's, it's, it's really magnets up there. It's really sad that uh, we couldn't. I couldn't get down like this year live to Cotswolds because I love coming down there and yeah, then yeah. go for that. We always go for a meal first and then come up to do the tour. When was it? Uh, you were down over a year ago, now, wasn't it? I've been down. I think I've been down the past three years running and then i did it online yeah, yeah. this year um, yeah, yeah big society as well isn't it um, it's always yeah. well attended big society i think the herschel to hawkwin one i was a little bit nervous about that one because i looked out oh, that's the uh, one i saw the tour you at yeah yeah the yeah. good the, i mean the demographic was they 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 all look like they might not quite be into <laughs> into this and i think Nobody everybody fell asleep no everybody Nobody stayed asleep. awake so it was yeah. good it was good but anyway, thanks for joining us tonight, Jonathan, and you're welcome to join the panel anytime. We will, just come yeah. in and uh, drop in and join the yeah, panel. Yeah, drop in. Yeah, mm -hmm. always okay. lovely to see you. And thank I want you. to thank I want to thank Andy tonight for doing the quiz, which is uh, it was an honour and a pleasure. Thank uh, you, Andy. Was, oh. And, and Kath, of course, quiz. Kath, of win. course, for winning it as usual. <laughs> you? Um, get quizzing, Kath, get quizzing. quizzing. Yeah, she's going to do I the will. next quiz. And we're going to, like I say, um, I know Rachel loves this band uh, and I love this band too. And I'm sure everybody in the panel loves this band as well. This is Rammstein Zona. We'll be back on Thursday with Reach Out to Touch Space. But in the meantime, on Wednesday, uh, if you follow my Facebook, everybody's welcome to join the North Wales Astronomy, Astronomical Society talk, which we'll be doing from this, I operate from this studio. And that is with John Thatcher from the Webb Space Telescope. Thank, Thank you very much and good night. That's a wrap. That's Yay. a wrap. <coughs> well done, everybody. Oh, you got your wooden spoon there. Yeah. That's it, yeah. <laughs> a cloudy I'm magnet mine. spoon. I got a spoon. <laughs> Excellent. Out of all the things we bought, it was for a filter drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, can you send me the um the details of um of this one for North Wales next month that I'm doing? Can you hear yeah, me? The, the, the link's out there, Andy. I'll, if Pisa does now, I'll send it to you. Okay, um, great. But I'll, I'll try and do that I now. Was, I was think about it. Sort of, you know, yeah. Dates and, and I, I'm not even sure which one they wanted in the end, which talk they wanted. So, yeah. Is it still Can clear out, Simon? Horizons? Oh, I have to check. Dave, I haven't seen the one for next month. I've seen the one for Wednesday, but not next month. Oh, sorry. This, the, 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 the one coming Wednesday. No, Which... Andy's on about the one he's doing, aren't you? Andy? Oh, right. I, I don't know. No, uh, I that. Is that already organised, is it? I've not seen that yeah. one. I was yeah, thinking I about think the went... James Webb. I think you went for New Horizons, didn't you, Andy? Yeah, Sam's given a the thumbs down there. What's, what's, what's... what's that with him? What's cloudy. that with him? Oh, it's gone cloudy. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It, 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 was, um, cloudy. it was the choice of gravitational waves or the event horizon telescope. So. Mm. Yeah. Gravitational waves sound good. I like yeah. that. Well, that went, cool. cool that, that went down a storm. I've got a meeting tomorrow night. In Dublin. It went down absolute storm that one, because it's it's a very interactive talk, and I like it when people don't choose it to do over Zoom because um, it's it's interactive. You need I need to be there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's very interactive, and um, it's a hell of a laugh as well. Oh God, we had such fun in in Dublin. It was amazing. Which talk was that, Andy? Which is the more interactive one? Uh, gravitational waves. Okay. Listening yeah. to the Underverse, gravitational wave astronomy. That's it. I mean, it can be done over Zoom, obviously, like anything can, but I like doing it in front of an audience because it's more interactive. But, um, but it, you know... I don't want to fly you to Wolverhampton just yet. Oh, uh, I wish I could. I really... I'm just so... I just need to get out of here. You know, I really do. Like, like all of you, I just want to travel again. I, know. I, I read yesterday that they've got three people in Hawaii with confirmed coronavirus and they're fully vaccinated. So, um, you know, oh, the, wow. vac the, the vaccine as they...